Hello, it's the 21st century, and ever since 9-11, we've had a very unsteady economy, an economy where it's very easy to lose your job, and unless you're a very lucky, very blessed minority, very hard to get new ones. So sometimes after a rough day, or just because you get that look from your boss, many people go home and they lose sleep over this one question. Am I about to lose my job? So the thing is, there are certain things to keep in mind when with any job that you have. So. If you follow these pointers, I'm pretty sure you'll be safe, for the most part. First of all, show up. If your hours are Monday through Friday from 9 to 5, show up for work. If you're sick and you won't be able to make it in, then Make sure that you call ahead of time using the protocol that your workplace has. For some people, it's sending an email. For some, it's sending a text. For some, it's calling a specific number. Learn what that protocol is and follow it. The only way that you should not be held responsible for not calling in is if you have to go to the emergency room or if you're unconscious. Otherwise, show up. Second, show up on time. So, I know for some people this is hard, especially if you've got kids, they have to get ready or if you have um, other dependents, or if you live far away. And then, of course, there's Chicago traffic with its unpredictable construction. And when someone just has to get into an accident on a major street. So, if... Um, well, first of all, unless your boss says, show up at, so, say, 9 o'clock sharp, then it's best to try to get there at least five minutes early. However, in most, for most workplaces, unless you have to clock in or your job starts right away, There is a typically a five minute grace period. So that's considered the executive promptness. So if you show up, so usually if you show up within five minutes of the time you're supposed to start work, you're considered on time. Don't get too dependent on this because there are certain places that don't have this. If you're gonna be late for family reasons or because of traffic, be sure to let your boss know ahead of time. Again, using the proper the proper protocol, going through the profit, proper channels. But try not to make yourself too late. In fact, if you find a route that's reliable, I know that's especially hard in Chicago because what's reliable today makes you late tomorrow, but if it's generally reliable, use that route. And I would say in order to make sure, maybe what you can do is take the amount of time that it would take you to get to work, add 10 minutes, and then subtract that from the time you are expected to leave and or expected to be there 
and and so that's the time that you should leave to go to work for example if it takes you 20 minutes on average to get to work then and you have to be at work by 8 30 then leave no later than eight o'clock that way you have that 10 minute grace period which you can use to your um, advantage if you need to leave work early again this doesn't work in all places but only in certain companies that have flexible times so show up to work on so show up to work and show up on time number three and this is a big one learn and obey the rules all workplaces have rules even if you had your own business that business will only succeed if you have if you use self-discipline and if you have guidelines for those working with you or for you so these are more than just polite suggestions they're rules for a reason if you don't understand why a rule is necessary and your boss is flexible, then ask why. Have a conversation. Uh, but in general, just follow the rules. Follow the, don't follow the rules only when you feel like it. Don't follow only the rules that make sense to you. Just follow the rules all the time. And if you're not certain what a rule is or what it means, ask. That's the time when you should ask. But don't just say, oh, well, I don't understand it, so forget it. No. When you take on a job, you're not being paid just to do the work. You're being paid to do what your boss says. Even if you think your boss has no brain or no heart, as long as it's within ethics, within your job description, you are getting paid to do what your boss says, to obey your boss. So, very important obey the rules another one and this is a big one avoid all gossip don't start it don't listen to it and just avoid it because when gossip is introduced into the workplace it will make things nasty. Um, it creates a very immature environment. So just stay away from gossip. If someone's telling you something about what so-and-so did, ask them these questions. First, ask them, why do I need to know this? Then ask, is my knowing this important for me to do my job or is it important for the good of the, the workforce you know the team is it good for keeping things safe or effective if the rule if the answers are no or if they won't answer cut them off and don't participate because the second you participate that's when things really start causing trouble and you really start that's when productivity goes down and there's tension unnecessary tension now, here's another guideline, equally important. Stay away from those, or distance yourself from those 
who are very problematic um, or who are cr causing problems either for the for the team for the customers for the boss or for you personally distance yourself from them when you can help it and if you have to work cl closely with them don't give them the cold shoulder just do what needs to be done and just keep it about the task at hand. If they say, oh, how was your weekend? It was okay, now let's get back to work. Something like that. Be polite, but make it known you're just about business. If they ask you why, then you can tell them if you want, but if you do, just keep it objective, but I would say if you can get away with it, just don't tell them. Okay, here, and here's another one that's related to the last guideline. If you have this one person, this one coworker who is very problematic, you try avoiding them, but they're just not getting the message, then try to talk to your boss and try to find time for try to find time for yourself to like sorry sorry try to find time either in supervision or whenever where you can talk to your boss about it and within that time period when you have one on one with your boss then you can explain, hold on, you can explain what's going on, but when you do, get to the point and be objective. Another one, be professional. And professional is really, professionalism is multifaceted. When I say be professional, I mean Talk professionally, dress professionally, and carry yourself in a professional manner so that no one can doubt for a second that you're there to work and that you're about business. So, I know there are some people especially in today's climate where they say um, they, they make issue, they take issue if a boss says your skirt's too short or your pants are too tight or you're showing too much skin. No. As long as it's not something that's too cut deep, you can't take that personally. Because unless, again, unless this is your own business, the workplace is not a place that's all about you and what you want. You have to ask yourself, is this good for the team? So if you like to wear flashy jewelry and... Um, and if you like to show all of your chest hairs for a place where you're supposed to, like, um, some, yes. Or if you, then you have to ask yourself, in what job would this be appropriate? And go to that job. But until you get there, wherever you're working now, do what's professional. Another thing, there are people who like to have these wild hairstyles. Some are distracting. Some are unsanitary. So if you are one of those people who have really long hair and you work in the food industry, do not get offended when you're told to put on a hairnet 
or to put your hair in a bun or a ponytail. This is to keep the food sanitary. Also, don't come, like if you wanna wear shorts or flip-flops or sometimes even sandals, make sure it's appropriate first. Because I, for one, when I'm at a restaurant, I don't wanna see a guy's big hairy feet. And I certainly don't want to see the big hairy feet of a chef because when people are busy working, especially, um, feet are in a lot of cultures and with me personally are usually considered something of uncleanness or ugliness. So, yes. When I'm at a restaurant, I don't want to look at someone's feet. Okay, so be professional. And also, along with be professional, if there's someone that you just don't like, either they're rude to you or a bully, let it slide for as much as you can. Don't yell at them. And don't talk about them behind their back. Don't do that. Because then you're going to be contributing to a toxic work environment. And when there is a toxic work environment, many bosses are going to look and try to figure out where it's coming from. And if it's coming from you directly, you're in trouble. So... And then also, don't come whining every time your coworker does something to piss you off. Don't. Try, like, if you have to, if you can't deal with it, then go home and write, and write a diary or whatever. But don't come crying to the boss every single time because then you're not considered a team player and plus you're wasting the boss's time and sometimes just knowing someone's gonna whine or cry about something then then that's just going to make things stressful you're gonna isolate yourself from the other workers, even those who are just innocent bystanders, and it's going to make people wonder if you're up for the task. If you get offended easily, and if you're always upset because someone looked at you the same way or whatever, maybe you should seek counseling. But until then, if you've got to cry, for heaven's sake, do it in private. Make sure no one sees you or hears you. Because if you go around crying all the time, especially in front of people, unless you have some emotional problems or something that you need help with or you're getting help with, most people who are not sensitive are going to consider you a crybaby. They're going to consider you immature. And they'll treat you that way. So, be professional. Another one. If something happens where there's extra work, even if you did everything you're supposed to do, and your boss asks you to pick up the slack, just do it. I know Nike is controversial right now, but just do it. If you feel that you're being given extra responsibilities and, and that others are basically getting off light, then 
schedule some time with your boss and try to have a candid yet objective discussion. But if it's within your job descri description, shut up and do it. Because those who are willing to take one from the team from time to time, they're considered one of those who'll go above and beyond. Like those who don't question it, they just do it. And a good boss will recognize that and they'll consider you to be an exceptional team player and he'll use that to your favor. Again, if he's a good boss. If you feel that you're being used, then that's trickier because it's hard to say no to your boss, but you, what you could do is do some trade-offs. For instance, if your boss says, um, do this file, I mean, file this paperwork or um, sign this paperwork, and um, you feel that someone else isn't doing anything, then you could say, okay, I can do that. Um, that's gonna take away time for doing this. Can so-and-so help me with that? And if they say yes, of course, great. If not, then just do it. Because eventually, if you suffer in silence, as it were, even if your, um, your boss doesn't see it, decent co-workers will see it. And if they're not too scared, they'll defend you, or at least they will offer to help you. So, if you feel that it's it's being that you're being unfairly treated, then for the time being, just do it. And another, and then one more. This should go without saying. But considering all the social media out there, when you're in public, when you're in public, I would say, unless you really feel that you need to, don't get yourself mixed up in certain situations where you're where you're basically expressing some controversial views or you're insulting someone. Because who knows, the person that you're insulting in public may be one of the trustees of your workplace. And if that's the case, you're butt's grass. You're meat. Because if he gets offended, if she, or if she gets offended enough, they will demand that you be fired, you be terminated. And, and then, sure, you, if you feel that it's discrimination, you can um, file a complaint, but many times, um, certain complaints or lawsuits will take a while and until then you're out of a job So I would say be very careful when you are criticizing someone Especially someone important or someone with power and be careful with um, certain be careful with certain statements because, or certain, expressing certain opinions. Because, sure, the First Amendment says freedom of speech. However, the sad fact is that only covers arresting someone, detaining someone, or um, denying them government benefits because they expressed opinions or government services because they expressed opinions that does not the first amendment does not 
protect your job status from a company that's not government related. So, if you are in a non-government job, then it's important to be extra careful of what you say. Even if you're right, be careful. Because if it's considered unpopular, well, a lot of these, especially um, multinational corporations, they have these, um, what do you call them? They have what, what they call um, social policies where they stand for certain things like, um, or like they say that they'll believe in certain values, even if those values they're standing for has nothing to do with the product. They will say that in order to be politically correct. And so if you say something that goes against their social policy and people recognize you as an employee of that company, they're going to wonder, okay, this, their social policy says that they're against this, and yet I see this person who works there who stands for it. And certain companies will say, well, whatever people say or believe in on their own time is their business, which that's how it should be within reason, but there will be times when they'll say, even when you're not on the clock, if um, you represent this company, this agency, whatever. And so, in order to demonstrate, in order to enforce their social policy, they'll fire you just for expressing your opinion. Just ask Kelvin Cochran um, from Atlanta, Georgia. Just ask Brendan Eich, who used to be, like he's a founder and one of the, one of the co, and he was one of the co-managers for Mozilla Firefox. They'll tell you, because they learned the hard way. So, I mean, believe what you want, even express your beliefs, but I would say be careful how your opinions are shared because you could say something three years ago and completely forget that you said it and some random person searching the internet comes across it and the next day you're called in the office and you're asked, to explain yourself so definitely and also um, another thing don't go butting into other people's business in public or starting fights in public because people have smartphones even regular original flip phones. And guess what they all have? They have cameras. Cameras that can videotape things. So if someone notices something's up or if they're concerned and they want to protect themselves, they'll pull out their phone and press record. And then after the incident, they're gonna take that file put it on Facebook, it's going to get shared a thousand times, people are going to write blogs about it, all within one day, so 24 hours hasn't passed yet, and still, about 50,000 people saw the video of you picking a fight or otherwise being ignorant. And then, and then, after the, um, after maybe 100 people, someone is going to share it on their blog. And then, before you know it, someone is going to look at the 
the face of the person being recorded and say, wait a minute, I know her. And what they're going to do is they are going to make a screenshot from that video and send that and the link to the video to her boss and say, is this the type of person you want working for you who will do this? And then they'll say, oh crap, you've got 50,000 people saying um, who have seen a video of one of our workers being morons, being ignorant or whatever, being bigoted. And then because of that, because all of these people have seen them and she's been recognized as an employee, the, co the um, organization has to force their hand. So as a result, this will, um, they'll have no choice but to fire you to show, okay, what they did, we don't stand for that and we don't tolerate it from our workers. Doesn't matter that it happened off hours. Doesn't matter that it happened far away from your, um, from where they worked. It doesn't even matter if it happened in another country. All it takes is people viewing something, getting upset over it, and then recognizing you as an employee for them to say you're fired. So, in fact, I would say once the person that you're approaching, once you see them pull, pull out their camera, that's your cue to walk away. Or if you feel that you must stick around, cover your face. Because once they get a sound bite of you ranting about something or harassing someone, then as soon as he presses send, it's going to be online forever. And by the time, even if you apologized to him five minutes later, once he pressed send, couple of his buddies are going to be re looking at it and sharing it. So within five minutes of him sharing it, over a hundred people have already seen you baking a fool of yourself. So, and because of that, it doesn't matter if you apologize. Because once so many people have seen it, your boss can't ignore it, so you're screwed.